I was in Israel to meet with the chief of Israeli intelligence on a totally different subject six years ago, and I heard by chance about the work that a very famous mathematician in Jerusalem had done. He had found the exact day that the Gulf War would begin in a code in the Bible. And I thought this was just nonsense. I thought it was absurd. I said, I'm not religious, and began to walk away. Then I checked out this mathematician. Eliyahu Rips is no ordinary person. He's the world's leading expert in group theory, the field of math that underlies quantum physics. He's considered one of the greatest mathematicians in the world. So I went to see him. But in my mind, I was certain that, oh, in an hour tops, I would find out why he was wrong. Because this could not be true. There could not be a code in the Bible. No one can know the future. Instead of spending an hour with Dr. Rips, I spent a week with him. And at the end of the week, I knew he was on to something real. Israeli officials will neither confirm nor deny that information regarding the first Scud attack was derived from researchers involved with the Bible Code. But given the results, it is fair to ask if perhaps science and religion have not at long last found a common ground. Three weeks before the Gulf War began, Dr. Rips and his colleagues in Israel found encoded in the Bible Saddam Hussein picked a day, enemy, scuds, and the date, January 18th, 1991, actually the equivalent in the ancient Hebrew calendar. Dr. Eliyahu Rips decided to find an answer to that question, and in 1982 began an intensive study designed to prove or disprove, once and for all, the ancient Jewish tradition that holds there are hidden messages encrypted in the Torah. It was 12 years before the completed study was published and came to the attention of Harold Gans. Since that study, the mystery of the Bible codes has sparked worldwide interest in the ancient text and sparked intense debate among scientists and biblical scholars alike. But is the idea of some sort of code in the Bible really new? What, if anything, does the Bible itself have to say about hidden or sealed information within its pages? Haven't there been others over the centuries who have tried to uncover hidden secrets in the pages of the Bible? What, if anything, did they discover? In the next few minutes, we'll try to provide answers to those questions and to what is perhaps the most intriguing question of all. After centuries of being on opposite sides, will science and religion finally come together in a single expression of truth? There are those who suggest they already have. Would it surprise you to learn that the concept was not only believed, but actually enlarged upon by one of history's most famous scientists? Sir Isaac Newton served as provost of Cambridge University for many years and is generally regarded as the first modern scientist. It is Newton who figured out the mechanics of the solar system and is credited with the discovery of the functions of gravity. He was also a firm believer in a biblical code. Sir Isaac Newton, who was better at it than anyone, said that the entire universe, not just the Bible, the entire universe, was a cryptogram, a code, set by the Almighty. And it was up to us to unravel this puzzle. And he, of course, also looked for a code that he was sure existed in the Bible that would reveal the future of mankind. Newton left many of his personal papers at Cambridge when he retired. His biographer, John Maynard Keynes, discovered the papers and was shocked to learn that most of the million or more words in Newton's own handwriting had nothing to do with mathematics or astronomy, but rather esoteric theology. Newton was a firm believer in a Bible code. He was so certain there was a hidden code in the Bible that he spent over half his life trying to decipher it. The secret of the Bible code, if indeed it existed at all, would remain hidden for another 300 years. Dr. Rips, in creating the Bible code computer program, took the original Hebrew text of the first five books of the Bible, the words that according to the Bible itself, God dictated to Moses on Mount Sinai 3,200 years ago, 
And all he did to that text was to eliminate the breaks between the words so that instead of words on a page, it became one long strand of letters, 304,805 Hebrew characters from the first letter in Genesis to the last letter in Deuteronomy with no break in words. So perhaps Dr. Rips was restoring the Bible, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, to its original form. In any event, he was not changing the order of the letters. He was just eliminating the breaks between the words. He then programmed a computer to look for really a very simple code that would reveal new information. Skip any equal number of letters and the new information was revealed. Perhaps we should take a moment here and explain exactly what an equidistant letter sequence or ELS code is and how it's constructed. To detect an ELS code, a computer must first be programmed to write down the first letter of the encoded word, represented in our formula by N. The computer will then skip a fixed number of letters, represented here by the character D, write that letter, skip the same number of letters, and write that letter, and so on. Let's try a simple example. Rips explained that each code is a case of adding every fourth or twelfth or fiftieth letter to form a word. Skip X spaces and another X spaces and the hidden message is spelled out. This appears to be nothing more than a simple description of ELS coding, but if you begin with the first letter of the paragraph, R, then skip every three letters and pick up the fourth letter following, the coded message is revealed. What is infinitely more difficult is the creation of a surface text that is sensible and easily understood and yet will seamlessly accommodate specific letters at fixed intervals. That process is called encryption. There are several things that have to be understood about the entire equidistant letter sequence coding. Just looking for words, virtually any words, as an equidistant letter sequence, you will find them in the book of Genesis, you will find them in War and Peace, you will find them in virtually any sufficiently long text that you try to find them in, particularly if you're using a computer. In any case, what is found is generally random. You have to apply statistical analysis to determine whether or not what you found is in fact random or is in fact well beyond what you'd expect to find at random. The key to statistical significance is how many related terms are found in a small area of biblical text and how many characters are in each term. Short words in lots of text are very likely just coincidence. So if all text can produce words at equidistant letter sequences, what makes the Torah codes unique? Now it's amazing. And only in the Bible do you find this. When, for instance, by skipping an equal number of letters, you spell out President Kennedy, the very next letters in the same skip sequence say to die, and Dallas is encoded in the same place. When you look for Shakespeare, the very next words in the same equal distance skip sequence say we'll present plays on stage, and Hamlet and Macbeth are encoded in the same place. You could find Kennedy or Shakespeare in some equal distance skip in any big enough text. If not in War and Peace, look in a bigger book. Eventually you will find some equal distance skip sequence that does spell out the name of any historical figure. But only in the Bible will you find encoded consistently in the same place accurate related information. In order to test the ELS code theory, the research team created a program according to strict scientific and statistical rules. The usable text would be only the book of Genesis, some 78,000 letters. In order to make certain the results could not be tainted by subjective interpretation, they selected the names of 34 of Israel's most famous and revered sages as the target of their search. To make it more difficult, they also asked the program to search for either the target's birth date or death date. After months of work, the incredibly complex mathematical model and program was ready. Now it was up to the computer. The results of this test startled even the researchers. All 34 names were there, coded into the text, along with either their date of birth or date of death. 
Encouraged by the results, the study was sent to the prestigious American mathematics journal Statistical Science for peer review and possible publication. Indeed, nothing is published in Statistical Science until it's been thoroughly reviewed by at least one independent referee, and on occasion two. In this instance, the documentation was submitted to three separate referees. Following its publication, a statement was issued by five mathematical scholars, two from Harvard University, one from Yale University, and two from Hebrew University, supporting the findings. Robert Koss, the editor of the Statistical Science Journal and a professor at Carnegie Mellon University, is quoted as saying, Our referees were baffled. Their prior beliefs made them think that the book of Genesis could not possibly contain meaningful references to modern-day individuals. Yet when the authors carried out additional checks, the effect persisted. The paper is thus offered to statistical science readers as a challenging puzzle. I reproduced the experiment, and lo and behold, I got precisely the results that they had reported. I then went ahead and did a new experiment. Instead of pairing each of the rabbis' names and appellations with their dates of birth and death, I paired them with the places of birth and death, cities, towns, villages, wherever it was they died or were born. And the results I got were even more significant than the original experiment done by Whitstam and Rips. At that point, I knew beyond any shadow of a doubt that the code was real. I felt a chill go up my spine.